Paul, I think the best place to start is with all the breaking news this morning, Mark Cooper being linked with Brentford. We've run that story. Yeah, um, you know, sort of circulated back in the last night, start of this morning. Um, obviously, Mark Cooper himself has sort of said he doesn't know anything about it. He hasn't been approached by the club, so that's what he's told us. Um, I can see why they'd want him, actually. Uh, Dean Smith played really attractive football, didn't he, at Brentford? Yeah. And did the same at Warsaw as well. He's yeah. always done well. Dean Smith on, you know, a tight budget and things like that. Um, and Cooper, he plays a similar style of football, so I can see why it's a good fit there. Um, I think Brentford are, are quite a unique club. I don't think they necessarily are a club to follow the rules, so to speak. Uh, mm. You know, like Villa two years ago, for example, while Dean Taylor's got right, we need an experienced championship manager. I don't think they're the type of club to go down that route. Mm. So... I can understand why they, you know, he'd be on their list. How far down? That's another question. Yeah, I mean, what are the latest odds today? I know we we got it on the old uh, tablet. Well, it's, it's interesting. Um, the odds have changed quite a lot today. Funnily enough, um, when I first looked this morning, Mark Cooper was thirty-three to one. He's now twenty to one. Uh, so that that's slashed in a few days. But if you're looking at the favourites for the job, I mean, Thomas Frank, who's mm. currently the uh, caretaker manager, was assistant to Dean Smith. He's the odds-on favourite. Other names in the frame, Roberto Di Matteo, Nathan Jones, Luton Town, Danny Cowley, Lincoln. Uh, again, I can see why they, he'd be linked with the job. And then you've got names like David Moyes, Michael Appleson, before you come to Mark Cooper. Yeah, I mean, sometimes chairman will appoint a left-field appointment. And in some ways, if, if Mark was to get the job at Brentford, it, it would be deemed a left-field appointment. It would. I think it would raise a few eyebrows mm. from the outside looking in people who don't quite know Forest Green that well that... Um, Oh, and they've gone for a League Two manager. Mm. But I suppose you could argue in their previous appointment they, they looked into League One to get Dean Smith. Um, but, you know, Mark Cooper's unbeaten. He's, he's managed in the Championship, albeit yeah. briefly before. Mm. You know, he took Swindon to the playoffs in League One. So I think there's been more left field than that would potentially be before. But I think it would it would definitely raise a few eyebrows. Yeah, and as you say, really, he, does, he ticks a, a lot of boxes. So, you know, he's, he's an attractive proposition for a, a team that is looking for a new manager. That's it. When you do delve into it, you think, oh, the style of play seems to be Smith attractive. Yeah. You know, some of the players there, I imagine Cooper would like yeah. as well. So, yeah. you know, he'd, I'm sure he'd get a good go at it. Yeah. He's in the third year of a, a five-year contract, I'm sure, Dale Vince would be loath to release him, and I would imagine money-wise to even even sort of talk to him would be a hundred thousand probably to part with him. It would take over three hundred thousand pounds. So I think he's he's not going anywhere soon. He'd be expensive, wouldn't he? Yeah. Especially I think well before the season he'd have been expensive. Let alone after how well they've done. Yeah. So there's that to put into mind. But I think let's not get ahead of ourselves. I think it would take, in my opinion, it would take a quite couple of managers to turn the job down before I think they'd seriously go for Mark Cooper. I think it maybe is similar to Villa. Mm. It was well documented they wanted Thierry Henry. Then he got linked with Monaco and then, you know, reportedly he turned it down. Roy Ferreira reportedly turned it down and then they went for Dean Smith. So maybe I think it would be more a case of that. But I I'm not surprised that he's on their list, albeit mm. maybe fifth or sixth choice. And I think if you are a manager to be linked with a job, you know, it, it's good for the ego, it's good good for their credibility, um, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a win, win, win for a manager. Sure, it'll give Mark Cooper a boost. Um, I think he'd probably appreciate, well, at least I'm getting recognised for the good work I'm yeah. doing. I, I asked him about the Manager of the Month award, he said he wasn't too bothered, but um, I was surprised that he didn't get nominated for the September Manager of the Month being unbeaten. I know there's a lot of draws in there, but... To not be one of the four nominated, I thought was a bit harsh. Mm. You spoke to him on the phone this morning. He he just sort of batted it off, really, didn't he? Yeah, I, I don't think I was expecting him to, you know, say, <laughs> yeah. "Oh yeah," but yeah. he he just said, "Look, I don't know anything about it. Um, no, I've not heard anything. He's fully focused on the game tomorrow, really." And um, but you know, like I'm sure a lot of managers would be, he admitted he was a bit mm. flattered. Um, mm. You know, it's nice to get linked. Mm. And again, it just sort of reinforces how well Forest Green are doing. And it's created on online, social media-wise, uh, websites. It's created a lot of in interest and, and conjecture, hasn't it? Obviously, yeah, there's, these things do. Managerial merry-go-round is 
well and truly started this season, hasn't it? Um, gets everybody talking, so it's what football's about, isn't it? Mm. But, I mean, looking at Brentford, that would be an attractive job. I mean, what, what a team they've got there. Some great players there. That Neil Mope, he's, he's absolutely flying, isn't he? Ten goals in ten appearances, is it? Mm. Some really exciting players, and I think... Similar, similar to here, you've got your, your exciting forwards here. They've got you know Roman Sawyers, they've got Sergi Canyos, mm. Josh McEachern as well mm. in midfield. Mm. You know he was touted for big things at Chelsea once upon a time. Yeah. So uh, yeah, anyone would love to take that job, mm. I'm sure. And I mean Forest Green at the moment are really on the map for on and off the pitch, and also for on with this unbeaten tag. And there's only themselves and Man, U- Man City. I nearly said Man United, Man City. Well. Say it says a lot in Forest Green have a better season than Man United, but yeah, yeah Man City, <laughs> Chelsea, Liverpool. Yeah. It it looked like well, a Riyad Mahrez penalty would have made that look even better, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah. And had that yeah. gone in, but it's absolutely brilliant. And not only that, there's twelve games unbeaten in the league. Mm. The cup matches well, the beat Cheltenham in the Czech trade, the win at Swindon in the League Cup. Yeah. Then Wickham and Coventry, two league one sides to go there, away from home. You know, making changes, I know both sides did, but yeah. to still come away with draws. In 90 minutes. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's fantastic. I mean, I see those two games as defeats. I know we've uh, we've argued about that and uh, Mark Cooper would argue with me on that one. But for me, you know, the games have gone and they've, they, they've lost them in my eyes. Penalty shootouts though. Yeah, it's, it's a lottery. I think you're lucky to win a penalty shootout. You're unlucky to lose one. I mean, I, I disagree with the Checker Trade Trophy penalty shootout because it's a, it's a group stage game. It's not like... The World Cup, you play three group games, don't you? You don't have a penalty shootout after a draw, do you? I just, it's one thing I don't quite understand. I know it's they they say it sort of stops the tie break when it's level, so I can see why they wanted to maybe get rid of that. But I'm just I'm still not sold on it. Um, it sort of dampens a good result, doesn't it? Yeah, and I still I still think they're they're unbeaten because they've not lost a single football match in 90 minutes, and that's what a football match is. Yeah, and the game against Coventry obviously went to penalties. They get a point for that match don't they top of the so group. have they lost it's <laughs> top of the group yeah yeah. I know uh, I think Arsenal and Cheltenham need to play each other with their game in hand mm. but top of the group good position so yeah. in the league unbeaten still in the playoff places and you know looking good to progress out of the group into the checker trade Where whatever people mm. think of that competition you know mm. to get in the knockout stage it's a chance to get to Wembley and it could really build momentum and gain that winning experience and during that game, Isaac Pierce obviously caught the eye and gives the manager something to think about, which is what the manager wants. Exactly, it's what any manager wants. Um, he wants he he now knows the Ruben Reed injury, touch wood, it doesn't happen. There's Isaac and Ben Morris to come in. Isaac has played made three appearances so far uh, against Wickham and the two Checker Trade games. He's scored in both the Checker Trade games, so I think Isaac would like to think he's pushing. Mark Cooper said to me this morning, he's not quite ready to start in the league, no. but I think it won't be long till we see him come off the bench and mm. slowly he'll be he'll be eased in and who knows. And for a pint-sized sort of player, he's got a, a terrific leap on him. It reminds me, for older people, um, David Speedy. He was a very small man, but he could leap. Don't forget Lionel Messi's the best player in the world and he's short. Uh, you know, I'm happy to vouch for a short player because <laughs> I'm short myself. So, you know, that old, that old saying in football... You're sitting I, down at the moment, though. <laughs> doesn't look like it. But anyway, <laughs> um, that old saying, isn't it? Oh, you're too small. A yeah, lot of yeah. young players get told that. So it's great to see someone defy that. Yeah. Looking ahead to Saturday now, then, uh, North, Northampton. Um, new manager, Keith Curl. Real experience at this level, isn't he? Did a did decent job at Carlisle. Mark Cooper knows him very well through their Bristol City days as well. He likes to play three five two, which so I think if he does deploy that, I know in a couple of games for Northampton, I don't think he's done that. But if he does revert to yeah. that, be interested to see what Mark Cooper does because he's been using three five two as well, hasn't he? Mm. Uh, it works for the players Forest Green have got. So, but yeah, Northampton twenty second, but I don't read into that at all. They've got some really good players in their squad, and they've just turned it around. They've got two very good draws against Berry and Swindon, who I expect to be there or thereabouts in terms of the top seven and then they went and beat League One Oxford in the Checker Trade so this mm. is a difficult game and Keith Curl like we said experienced manager he has got the ability to, to turn teams round definitely so he's a big character in the game had a great career playing for England Man City and like you said his experience and both the Bristol clubs as both well both the Bristol so, clubs so yeah. he's he's been around the block he's very clever very astute no nonsense 
as Mark Cooper told me today, you know, no nonsense manager, no messing. Yeah. So they'll get the basics right and they'll yeah. be they'll be bang at it. They'll be high energy, I expect. He is no nonsense, but I think he has got that ability to be a really good man manager. I've met him a couple of times. First time I met him, he said, "Did I have a battery for his vape?" He'd run out of vaping, vaping material, but just seems to be a real spot on bloke. Uh, I haven't met him myself, so maybe get a chance on Saturday. But he seems, he's just, Mark Cooper himself said he's a really good bloke. So I think it's a meeting of two old friends. It should be should be a good game. I'm I'm expecting entertainment. We're not going to have another draw, are we? Yeah, we are. <laughs> Right, let's predict that the way. One, one. That's it. Yeah. Next question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ab- absolutely. Um, so, um, yeah. Do you think um, Mark's likely to tweak the team from the previous league game team? Where, where do you see it? Interesting. Uh, I think midfield's been tweaked a bit recently. Lord James came out of it, didn't he? Mm, mm. Um, I think Matt Worthington's pushing. I think he's pushing for a start. I would not be surprised if he's included. Uh, I think the back five, if it's still a back five, will be the same McGinley, Digby and Rawson hmm. up front it's whether he sticks with Tavon Campbell or starts George Williams hmm. I think that's a question yeah and a few more players now are starting to there was like a core of seven or eight that were nailing down yeah. places I think it's gradually becoming nine almost ten now I think so yeah I think you could pick the defence in midfield itself it, like I said before it was the forward positions wasn't it hmm. so it's interesting to see how that will develop. I think Grubb is now yeah. starting. Yeah, I was going to come on to that. Yeah. He seems to have sort of starting to nail That's down that, that place on that wing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, those two wing places slash number 10 role. One, mm. one of them looks like it's being filled by Grubb now. Yeah. He's having a great impact, as we spoke yeah. about before. The thing with this squad, though, Paul, you know, nobody can be, be afforded to drop their standards, can they? That's right, because there's someone who can come in and then when... Like, a young lad like Isaac Pierce comes and does well, you know. Hopefully that should get people to raise the game and give them that motivation. But it's that's what's been happening all season and maybe that's one of the big factors behind the unbeaten one. Absolutely. OK, lovely. All right, thank you for joining us again. And we'll both be at the game. There'll be a live blog, match report and all the usual post-match reaction. Thank you. Yeah, cheers. it'd be great if you could tweet us as well. We'd love to hear your yeah. views and we can mention them on the podcast next week. OK, cheers.